And then next I'll cover in just a few minutes a brief update of uh, just what we're seeing going on in the HPC marketplace. Uh, as you can see, most of our team is here, uh, the Hyperion team. For those of you who don't know us, what we try to do every uh, quarter and or throughout the year is we do attempt to track every HPC server uh, sold. And that includes the ones for AI, big data, and all advanced technologies. Uh, here's kind of the list of the other things we do. We do publish a lot of reports. So if you're interested in any reports on various topics, just let us know. In every market and technology area, we have to maintain five-year forecasts. So we have a very highly data-intensive structure to everything that we do. So if you're interested in that portion, we'd be uh, glad to share that with you. And some various issues right now on our mind as far as what's going on in the HPC market. There are some very massive growth rates taking place within the market itself, primarily around AI, machine learning, deep learning, also in the big data area. And the third one, uh, which is invisible to a lot of folks, but they're non-traditional HPC users joining uh, the HPC marketplace. It's the enterprise space that has found that they really need HPC solutions to do their tasks. And we can thank the big data, the machine learning AI to help motivate that whole movement. But the number of customers actually uh, acquiring HPC systems are just expanding dramatically right now. Uh, the non-X86 processors could alter the landscape. We're seeing them all over the place. Uh, there's kind of two different natures. One are general purpose processors. The other are highly special purpose ones, you know, really in the machine learning, deep learning areas. Uh, and also the exascale race right now. The key parts you'll see are predictions on where we think the exascale machines are going to happen, but there's a lot of secondary questions like how much of the exascale technology is going to move down market to the rest of the market, or will it stay as an isolated segment? Uh, and we're looking at that very closely. And of course, HPC in the cloud is gaining, gaining traction. So what were the top trends? First of all, 2018 was another strong year, but a very strong year with 15% growth. In perspective, you know, that's a higher growth rate than almost all, all other IT segments. There's just a few that are growing faster than that. You'll see underneath that, though, there's some sub-segments that are growing very quickly there. Uh, the top end of the market has finally started growing again after about four and a half years of softness. Uh, we're expecting that growth to still be on a roller coaster, but a very strong growth rate for the next uh, four to five years. And here are the actual numbers itself. Uh, the uh, overall market uh, is just less than $14 billion, with supercomputers being over $5 billion a year in purchases right now. And here's how it splits out by the different vertical sectors. Uh, as I mentioned in the last uh, couple of meetings, the big surprise to me is how many of these now are more than a billion dollar market? Just the individual verticals. And then we have a couple that are actually more than a $2 billion market uh, alone. And here's by vendor shares. Uh, it's amazing because we had a bullet for a while that said, you know, the vendor shares are changing, then we drop that for one uh, quarter, and then all once HPE buys Cray. So it's back to, you know, a lot of shifts and changes in what's going on in the marketplace. Uh, I should mention the other category, we track between 35 and 40 separate companies, and our rules are always very straightforward about confidentiality. If a vendor wants their numbers shown, we show them separate. If they want their numbers not shown, they're tucked in the other category. Uh, so I mentioned there were some very, very big other growth areas at a large. So right now we're still predicting that servers are going to grow on the order of 8% a year for all HPC servers. But then if you look at the big data AI portion of that, that's going to grow about twice the rate of 15%. And then when you subset underneath that the AI machine learning, deep learning, you're into the 30%, you know, five-year CAGR. And I just have to mention a 20 to 30% five-year CAGR redefines markets because, you know, that's just a tremendous change that's taking place. Uh, so then our forecast by the different categories are shown in this chart, and these charts will be made available for everyone. You can see we expect the supercomputer segment to actually show the highest growth rate, and this is driven by the exascale system acquisitions at this point in time. A major question we have, though, is in 2024 and 2025, Will countries and nations continue to invest $600 million in singular systems? Now we know in Japan there's going to be a system that's going to be a billion dollars. In the U.S. there's already three announced $600 million systems, but we're very uncertain whether that level of spending will continue or will it go back to a more what I call historic norm of maybe a couple hundred million dollars a system. So then, in addition to the server portion that I've shown, here's where we overlay external storage, middleware applications, and Steve Conway and Alex have added a new part at the bottom there where we actually overlay then the spending in public cloud. 
So if you look at the total spending for HPC right now in all the categories we track, it's going to be roughly $44 billion by 2023. And then before I get to just some uh, concluding parts, I, we did a little work to, because we've asked, been asked the question a lot and we've noticed this, how quickly do HPC buyers change their mind? How quickly, you know, if somebody has a new technology, they're able to implement, for example, machine learning, deep learning, or AI to accomplish something new. Compared to enterprise computing, we've always said HPC will change quickly. And this is an example where x86, primarily driven by Intel, literally in two years changed the whole nature of the market. And this is uh, processor shipments. You can see up until 20, uh, sorry, it's a little hard to read, but up until 2002, you were talking about in the yearly shipments and literally just the 100,000, 200,000 range. And then two years later, we're up in the three million range as far as the amount of acquisitions. So the in other interesting thing about this chart is when a new technology becomes available for scientific computing, not only do people switch to the new technology, they do a lot more scientific computing. It actually ignites the market and causes it to grow. So with that, in summary, I have a couple charts on some predictions that we're making. The first one, this is our prediction for the next, uh, actually for the first five years of exascale uh, system purchases, where they're going to be purchased, China, EU, Japan, US, the total number of installations in that given year, and then the total value. Now the one thing I have to highlight here, this is when they're installed and accepted. So if you compare this to your notes, so like when the first machines come in, these numbers will be about eight to nine months later because this is when they can take re the vendor can take revenue because it's actually a market number. But you can see the exascale portion of the business here is on the order of uh, $10 billion over this window. So it is a tremendous amount of spend running just between one and a half to $2 billion a year. Uh, so the next prediction, of course, no surprise to anyone, is that there are a lot of new processors, accelerators on the way right now. They're also coming from a lot of different countries. J Japan, China, and Europe are all developing, you know, special processors, new types of processors in the market. NVIDIA contends to be the dominant accelerator today, but the number of companies that are developing targeted accelerators, whether it's for video processing, certain types of machine learning, deep learning, are all over the place. So we don't know how that market's going to shape out. The next one is we do think the exascale race is going to drive some new technologies. With the amount of fundings and investments being made, we think as far as system design, on the software side we're very hopeful too, but also new types of memory and new architectures, we think uh, a lot of, there'll be a big fallout from exascale. The real question we have is how much of that new technology will actually make its way into products in the short term versus longer term. And uh, as I showed before, artificial intelligence, which we include machine learning, deep learning, are really the two largest, but there's graphical analytics and other pieces, is just growing faster than anything else right now. So, you know, what, the portion of the market that's hyper growth right now is uh, this particular area. We do think the trust or transparency issue that, in our belief, is really holding the AI back right now will be addressed fairly quickly uh, in the marketplace, but it will still hold back certain applications of uh, machine learning. And then conclusions, HPC continues to be a strong growth market, although still roller coaster, you know, strong growth, but up and down a lot. Uh, the HPDA AI are the highest growth areas. Uh, the vendor share positions, again, shifted greatly. So we've seen like four different periods now of vendor share positions shifting, primarily through mergers and acquisitions. And as you've seen us for now over 12 years, software is just lagging hardware all over the place. Um, and we think that is the area that probably needs the biggest investment to see the largest uh, end results. And if you have any questions, feel free to email myself or any member of the team or check out uh, our various websites. And with that, I would like to hand it to David Martin for the uh, morning session.